Salam Tanat, Aina Yisterling, Senbet Salam, Shabbat Shalom. Greetings. This is the eighth Sabbath in our year, in this particular year, the eighth Sabbath and the eighth Sabbatical reading, Azizacho, or Wayishlach, according to uh, the better Hebrew, or as many might know it, according to the Ashkenazi Hebrew, Vayishlach which means he commanded, referring to how Yaakob commanded his servants as he trepidated, or one could say feared, towards uh, reconciling with his, as he attempted to reconcile with his brother, um, his brother Esau. And when we look at the Kamite mythos, we find something similar with uh, Sut or Sait or Shait, Shait and his brother um, Harui or Heru or Horus, Horus and Seth or Horus and Sut. Something very interesting is very similar, this reconciliation. But in working up to this particular reconciliation, there are some interesting twists and turns in the story, namely um, the memory of the past because of the past dealings between the brothers and the last time that Yaakob had um, been around his brother, his brother wanted to kill him because of the barakat, because of the blessing, as well as because of the the kurna, the birthright, but more because of what happened with the blessing on top of what happened previously with the sale of the um, the Kurna, the birthright, the firstborn status for some Kewet, basically, um, for some um, red, hot, spicy Ethiopian sauce. So, Esau, the last words that Ya'ako basically heard from his brother or concerning his brother is that his brother wanted to kill him. So, now he seeks to reconcile with his brother because Yahweh had spoke to um, Jacob in a vision, in a dream, as it was said, um, telling him to return to his, his country and to return to his kindred and that he would do him good there, he would do him well. But in some of the back and forth uh, exchange of information and how the information was read, we get to learn this in this particular sabbatical um, study. Um, we'll try to go into some of the detail, but we're going to teach it a slightly different, but still hopefully touch on some of the main, the key principles and key ingredients than we did the, the previous two times. This is Genesis chapter 32, verse 4, to Genesis chapter 36, verse 43, and it's Azizacho. We have a typo on page 4 of our sabbatical um, document of the Sabbath reading in the English part. The hard part is correct, but the transcription, uh, you can say, um, is, uh, is, is, is incorrect there. So we have to update that. And we're making a note. It says, Izazacho. It should say, it should say Azazacho. He commanded them. Now, this is also the same section, the portion of Scripture, the portion, the parasha, the kufal, the reading, which touches on how Ya'ikob, who is known as the supplanter, how he becomes a prince with El, or a prince with Chayel, a prince with the power, a prince with God. And the incident, the very interesting and somewhat cryptic incident of him wrestling with an unidentified man for a blessing. That Jacob is wrestling with a man for a blessing. Which seems to connect very keenly with, with the coming forth by day. Since throughout that section of the, the chapter, chapter 32, it repeats the breaking forth, the breaking forth of day, the breaking forth. The man even said, let me go, because the day is breaking forth. And Jacob said, no, I won't let you go. This is after the man touched his, uh, uh, his, his, the, 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 the shank or the hollow, what's called the, the hollow of the thigh, or what is actually the, yeah, the hollow of the thigh or the sinew, which shrank. 
And this is how some say that Jacob, Yaakob, walked with a limp. He had a little limp, and he had to really walk with that staff. He really needed that staff, even though the staff was his only accompaniment um, when he had left and fled from his brother. Now, the interesting note that we want to touch on is, as we have been saying in these teachings, is the key words. When new words and new names are introduced, especially in the in the Hebraics, it's good to try to look it up and figure it out, like, what, what is it talking about? Because the name provides a lot, as Mahanaim, which is mentioned in the very um, beginning part of the chapter, Mahanaim, and then when Jacob gets the news back from the messengers that Esau, his brother Esau, is coming to meet him, and 400 men are with him, uh, the scripture says that then Yaakov was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two bands. So there's a repeating of this idea of two bands or two companies or two camps or two encampments or two hosts or two armies based on Elohim's Tabaot or Yegziyavihir Sarawit. So we want to focus on what does Mahanaim mean. Now, as we've referenced in one of the previous teachings, and we'll reference this more along with like the Schofield Reference and Study Bible, which we're going to seek to provide digitally from the lojsociety.org shortly. Um, stay tuned for it. Um, if you don't find up there, send us a contact about it, as well as the, the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is a very good um, study tool to help one to understand, to get the rational discernment that is, that is necessary from the rational expression. The books are the rational expression, but to understand that they have to be lived out and overstood in the, in the inner sense, in the inner sense, and one has to intuit it and enter into it in spirit and in truth. So it's not just an intellectual exercise, but it is a spiritual exercise exercise. So Mahanaim, which is mentioned at the very beginning of the chapter where it says, and Yaakob went on his way and the angels, the Melakim or the Melaik of Elohim met him. And when Yaakob saw them, he said, this is Elohim's Tarawit, or excuse me, this is Elohim's Tabaot, uh, the uh, Tebaot or Tebaot, Sabaot, Exiavia Sarawit. This is his host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. Now, in the Schofield Study Bible, the reference Oxford edition, there's a marginal note which says um, for Mahanaim, there's, there's an F, and the F in the margin says, i.e., two hosts, two hosts or bands. And they go on now to describe saying that the visible band, which was Yaakov and his uh, body Yaochu or his servants, and the invisible band or God's angels, the invisible band. Yet when we read verse 2, it says, and when Yaakov saw them, he saw somebody. He, 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 didn't, he didn't see translucent people. He saw somebody and he said, this is Elohim's host. So we need to keep in mind that even the angels are both visible and invisible. It's like right now one's hearing the word. You understand? I'm not in one's presence. So the word, you understand, is the uh, uh, example of the invisible, you understand, manifestation of the message, the message, the messenger. So we have messenger and messages also very much keyed in this particular chapter between the the messengers or the angels of Elohim, then we have Yaakob, his own servants and his own messengers sending the messages back and forth to his to his brother Esau as he tries to work out a reconciliation. But when he hears about these four hundred men that are coming now, Esau is coming to meet him with four hundred men 
Jacob gets, Yaakov gets, um, as it says, he was greatly afraid and distressed, and then he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two bands, into Mahanaim. So he, he, he saw the angels, he saw them, and he called the place Mahanaim. Then after he sends a message to his brother Esau, the messenger's servants come back and they say, yes, Esau is coming to meet you, and he has 400 men with him. So Jacob, he takes contingency, he, he, basically some contingency, he makes a contingency plan right now. You always say he makes a contingency plan, even though it's because of the, 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 the fear and the distress, he still organizes himself in a very interesting way, and he says to those with him, if Esau come to the one company and smite it, and smite it or hit it, then the other company which is left shall escape. 